Hi everyone, I'm Brian Brewer from the Cancer Research Institute. Today we're celebrating a 10-year anniversary of the first FDA approval of checkpoint blockade immunotherapy. This is the drug ipilimumab, also known as Yervoy, which was approved in 2011 to treat metastatic melanoma. So this approval was a watershed moment for the field, opening up the way to many more FDA approvals since across a variety of cancer types for this type of cancer treatment. So joining me today to celebrate is CRI immunoadvocate and melanoma survivor, Sharon Belvin. Sharon was one of the first patients to be treated successfully with this type of immunotherapy. Now, ipilimumab was created by CRI Scientific Advisory Council Director, Dr. James Allison. Dr. Allison, in 2018, won the Nobel Prize for this impressive work. Now, Sharon had enrolled in a clinical trial of this drug, leading that clinical trial with CRI Scientific Advisory Council Associate Director, Dr. Jed Walchok. So a lot of CRI connections here. We're very excited to have Sharon here with us. Let's catch up with her. Sharon, welcome. How are you? I can't believe that I was diagnosed in 2004 and here we are today and I'm still having these conversations with you. I think that that's absolutely amazing. For those who don't know your story, in a nutshell, kind of, kind of what happened? Right as I was finishing up my grad school back in 2004, I was having a hard time breathing. So I went to the doctor, nothing happened. They couldn't find anything. Finally, diagnosed with stage four melanoma right off the bat. But they tried every chemotherapy on the planet from different kinds of surgeries. Uh, I can't even list all of the type of drugs that I was given. But long story short, in the fall of 2005, I was enrolled for the phase two, I believe, clinical trial for IPI. And the drug saved my life because I was only given four treatments through that fall. And by the following year, almost the exact time actually, I was in no evidence of disease. How did the medical team re respond when, when this happened? I think everybody was hopeful, but nobody actually thought that this was going to happen in the way that it did. Every time that I have dinner with Dr. Allison, he always looks at me and goes, you're cured. <laughs> Every single time. How does that make you feel? You know, as a cancer patient, I don't know if I ever will totally believe the word cure because that to me means no fear of recurrence. But as far as cure goes at not coming back, I've been completely, totally healthy. And now not only, you know, am I here, but the man that invented this is looking at me going, you're good. No more. You're good now is an, is an unbelievably wonderful thing. Looking back where you were 15 years ago and where you are today, how has your outlook uh, on life changed? You know, getting this diagnosis, especially at such a young age, my outlook was there wasn't going to be a today. There would be no future for me. Now, if you take that exact statement and 180 it, exactly the opposite, that's today. Because pretty much after you survive cancer, anything else in life doesn't seem that bad. <laughs> and my kids might be tired of me saying it by now, but I say, you know, this isn't cancer. We'll be fine. We'll work hard and we'll get through it, but it's not cancer. No one's dying. I like that today if he gave me the opportunity to live any kind of life that I want. And that's an absolutely amazing thing. What are some things that you were able to, to achieve that you didn't think you'd ever be able to and, and kind of how has life changed for you? My life now is amazing. And I know that this is where I'm supposed to be. And if it wasn't for that trial, I wouldn't be able to do any of it. And my children wouldn't be here at all. I know with us, you're, you're an immuno advocate, which means you, you make your story available, you make yourself available to speak with others who are encountering immunotherapy for the first time or might have some questions about it. What has that experience been like and, and how else are, are you connecting with uh, other cancer patients and, and how is it different from, from 15 years ago? Every single year after my no evidence of disease, I am inundated by cancer survivors. And it's kind of this really crappy club that nobody wants to be a part of, but it's filled with some amazing people. <laughs> I think just talking to anybody who gets you is very helpful. I wish that I would have had a survivor to talk to because I was asking for that. And unfortunately there was none. So I'm blessed and very privileged to pay it forward. You know, I hope when people hear the word cancer, they no longer think chemotherapy, they think immunotherapy and the chance of a cure for them. Mm -hmm. um, because it's not just living with cancer, it's a, a life afterwards, the possibility of a life afterwards. If there's one thing you you think uh, a newly diagnosed cancer patient should know or, or think or hold in their heart, 
What would that be? Hope. Hope. Um, people think their world is over as soon as they hear the word cancer. And that's just not the case. Try to stay calm, even though your head is spinning. Uh, sit down, slow yourself down, and really listen to what is a possibility for you. And hear that people are still around with your diagnosis all of these years later. Hopefully, we're working towards that. And hopefully, with that idea present, that their hope moving forward will be exponential. Thanks again for joining us on this, you know, milestone 10 year anniversary of the approval of the first checkpoint blockade. Um, you're, a, you're a rock star and legend among those who were among the first to be treated and, and to respond successfully to this therapy. Um, and I'm so glad that you're a part of our immuno community and, and, and you're a, a staunch immuno advocate too, Sharon. So thank you very much. And I hope that in 10 more years, we have this exact conversation again. I'm sure we will because you're cured. I'm cured. <laughs> Thanks, Sharon. We'll, we'll yeah. catch up with you again. Bye-bye, Brian.